Okay. This, uh, I, I really don't know. I'm sticking with this project. I, I couldn't sleep all night. I debated quitting uh, or just stopping now, but I, I'm going to do what I said I'm going to do. Uh, it's 7.42 a.m. I've been up since 5. I uh, went to bed like by 1, so I got about 4 hours of sleep. So I'm slipping into what I like to call war mode, uh, which involves finishing this first. So I'm going to get to the coffee place a little bit early this morning and um, meet Clark Surrey and Ivan Pissell for some coffee and then muster up the energy to do a workout. All right, let's, uh, let's get in the car. Let's get out of here. I'm never doing Airbnbs again. Today on Fast Food. With fewer than four hours of sleep in my affordable Airbnb, war mode kicks in as I meet up with an old friend I haven't seen in over seven years for a workout. That's flashy. A juggling challenge. 100 360s and then we can go eat. And the most expensive pancakes I've ever eaten in my life. I mean, I had to take out a loan to get these two mother Were they worth it? Find out today on Fast Food. Wow, it is early. I gotta get used to this though anyway. We're gonna be getting... Oh. Yes. I'm heading down to Alfred Coffee in Studio City to meet up with Clark Surrey and Ivan Fissell. Uh, I've known Ivan, I don't even remember when I met him, how that happened. I think it was contrived, I think it was forced, I think he bought his way in somehow. Um, I think somehow through Mark Neiser, I don't know, I'm gonna find out later on today. Ivan is a uh, one of the more successful, like, underpassing zone, under comedy industries under Raspini Brothers, most successful jugglers uh, around today. He's constantly working below clockwork, below uh, Bob Mendelssohn, but right at the top underneath that tier. I always give Ivan a lot of shit and he loves it. Don't ever let him tell you any differently. There he is. I can, I can identify that walk anywhere. There they are. Fist bump. Fist bump. So. Wait, did I get that? Do it again. One. So we did this. Hey, I got that one. <laughs> you got? No. Okay. That's fine. What's well, going on? Hey. Hey. Art, nice nice to meet you. Man. Good. All right. So you guys can handle your own lives without me. Should we drink some coffee? Yeah. You know we're gonna do that. Right? Yeah. Let's sure. get this over with quickly. <laughs> Jim juggling. What kind of hand Oh, they got matcha. What'd you get? I just got the regular drip coffee. They don't do pour overs here. This is alright. This is pretty good. But we're gonna go somewhere else later. It's gonna be awesome. Who's that fake YouTube personality? We well, say what you said before. <laughs> hey everybody, we're getting coffee today. We're at Alfred's Coffee, and this place is amazing. Everyone's talking about it. I gotta try it myself. I got the matcha. Hey, I, I didn't get shit. Yeah, why didn't you get anything? I have a pre-workout car in my tank. What pre-workout do you take? <laughs> Pump fuel. Pump fuel? What's yeah. in that? What's your shit? You got pre-workout and everything? You're an athlete? Oh, I, I, I just threw this on. I don't know. I have no idea. That's yeah. weird. We're going to chug this. He's ready to go. He's going to chug his pre-workout in the car on the way to the gym. I'm gonna have to blur that because we're sponsored by Cameron Ritter's uh, supplement company. Yeah, okay, yeah. <laughs> All right, I think it's shooken up. You never I know. mean, how coagulated was that powder? So that's your workout right there. Uh huh. What's it taste like? Oh, and pills. Pills, too. That's the steroids. <laughs> how much caffeine is in it? I don't know. Enough. My heart doesn't stop. What, what is in it? How, how can you ever really tell? Did you read the back? No. Why'd you buy it? Coupon. There we go. Okay, now we can work out. Do you have a specific day? Because I know you got your free workout. You're, you're yeah, being I was very gonna, regimented. I was going to do some shoulders today. So, sh just shoulders? Whatever you want to do. Two hours right? of shoulders? Uh, you know, <laughs> two yeah, hours of shoulders? Two hours of shoulders, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> One exercise, real slow. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
to review Wink every once in a while too. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, breathe, breathe, breathe. <laughs> I think breathing fucked you up. You should have held your breath. <laughs> you said you should never eat pancakes. You said never. There's never a time to eat pancakes. I'm at breakfast time on your birthday, maybe. Or you could you could say if you're making a documentary, that's a good excuse. Sure. To eat pancakes. So so are, are you are you gonna actually order some or just watch me eat them? We'll see how I feel. That's just unnecessary. There is no reason to be jumping from elevation to elevation while you're doing push-ups. <laughs> what, what are you training for? Some sort of crossfit? Yeah, it's down, down and then... <laughs> That's the safe way to That's do it. That's one way. Or you can just stand through it. Just get to it. Get it to a The way up is harder. Yeah. Almost didn't make it. <laughs> Do whatever's fun. Until you can't, because you broke your elbows and shoulders. That's flashy. I could tell. Yeah, that one suits you. I wouldn't look right doing that. Just 105 ball, three up, 360s, and then we can go eat. There you go. We both have to get it to leave. All right. Oh, God. You got one? He's given up on the 360s challenge, but I can't get him to stop juggling. We, we could have left, he wants to leave early, but now he started juggling. And now Clark's juggling, we're never gonna leave. Is, is the fan always in one place or never in one place? The blades. Like, at any given point, if you threw a ball up, would it always miss or always hit? I mean, is it a timing issue, or is it going so fast that it's never... <laughs> and that's how you turn a three-day pass into one day. Oh, it's an ass catch. I can't do an ass catch. And you can always tell when it looks like he's about to take a dump, he's going to do an ass catch. <laughs> Be careful with that, because I, I told you... No joke, I really felt that. Don't, look, don't do it again. Whoa. Can't walk anymore, but he got the trick. Right. I showed the doctor on the ship the, the move that I wanted to do that caused my injury, and he gasped at it. He saw, <laughs> yeah, yeah. He saw what I'm doing with my Probably, back, and he's like... Yeah. Well, you know, I'm real glad we did that. Yeah, and now... Pancakes. <laughs> well, we are walking down the escalator because they work like stairs. Just because it moves for you doesn't mean you can't also use your legs to get out of other people's way. These are, these are, these are Jason gripes from the 90s. <laughs> it's universal, it's timeless. It is a timeless as long yeah. as there are escalators in the world, those rules still apply. <laughs> or, you know, stand on the right, walk on the left. So you're saying when, when we wait for our bags, the baggage claim, we should stand right up against the baggage claim? Absolutely not. That, first of all, they need to draw a line about six feet away from it so that everybody can see whose bag is where and why, and only go up to the carousel when your bag is there. Okay, but okay, but if I'm, if I'm waiting for an elevator and the door opens, I should just get right in, right? No, then you wait for people to get out. These are completely different scenarios. I don't, I don't. There's rules that make sense and apply out before in, 
okay? And that, you could take out the four in and apply it to everything. You know that. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Twice. Elevators, buses, any sort of transportation out before in. Right. If you go in, you're just getting in their way. Carousel, out before in. The luggage comes out before you go in. But instead, everyone's going in first and then just, you know, huddling up and then there's only enough room. I mean, you know, if you expand the circumference of the circle, you can fit more people. So more people like, can view the like same area. I just feel like the closer I am, I'm gonna get my luggage faster. That's just how I not feel. If it, not if it doesn't come out and look, I'm behind I, you. I, if look, I'm behind you. I travel a lot. I kind of I kind of know about this, this kind of thing. So <laughs> I fly, I'm executive flat, and I'm un-American. I, you know, I so, like, agree to disagree on this one. I don't agree to that. I look at tags no. that say priority, and uh, they don't come out first or anything, but they're on there. Uh, I'll do it. I'm gonna I, I don't. I don't mean to offend anybody, yeah. but you don't have anything like Splendid here, do you? Um, don't I say don't Stevia. Stevia. Uh, we do have Stevia. <laughs> but I'll check. That's fine. Like, how did you find your way into my life? Like, why do I know you? And as far back as I could go was Mark Neiser and LA Valley College. Yeah, it was. A, yeah, Ni Neiser had me give you a ride home one time. I was like, I started. Uh, so I that was like the equivalent of just shoving us in a closet together. Well, <laughs> yeah, being like, go. <laughs> so with these animals in a cage and see who bites. Yeah, no, I was like 17, and then, yeah, it's LA Valley, and then I, I practiced with Neiser and Bryson, and then I think you just moved back or something. It was a good time for juggling. Was that late 90s? Like everybody, like every pro juggler lived in LA, I think. But yeah, I think everybody moved away. I lived in Vegas for a decade. Um, really, 10 years? Oh, yeah, almost 10 years exactly, yeah. From 03 to. Yeah. Oh, 13. Oh, 13. By, by my count. Yeah. By my map. Yeah. Yeah. It's right there. There you go. You're welcome. <laughs> we didn't know how long you were going to be doing your, your vegan documentary while we were here. <laughs> Here's what I don't understand, okay? You're not vegan for health reasons. You're, you're not vegan uh, to save the animals. So why are you so strict on it? I don't know why I'm so strict on it. I think it's just like my mindset. If I if I break it ever, it's I can't like keep it going. You know, like I have to just do it 100. percent There's just I don't know. I'm not one of those people. You're either all in or you're not. Yeah, well, I mean, it's hard to keep motivated. There's not like a goal. No, I mean, I think it's it's better for the environment. It's better for the outlet. Burrito. Come on, burrito. Thanks. Oh, those pancakes. Yeah. Thank you. These are the dad's pancakes featured on Somebody Feed Phil. He thought they were good. I'm gonna have to try it. Uh, first, I'm gonna try them without anything. I flew 1,500 miles for these pancakes. No adding condiments. Like I feel like this is not how you're supposed to eat pancakes. So no, but that's how you assess the base product. The base product. Yeah, these are good though. They're not worth the travel. <laughs> but uh, I'm plant-based, six out of seven days a week, which is beyond vegan, right? It's, it's a more strict version of vegan because it is. I can't. Yeah, nothing processed, no refined sugars, no oil. Oh, just, I didn't know that. Yeah, so plant-based is basically whole foods, nothing that's been processed. Oh, okay. So being vegan, you can have Oreos, you can do pop tarts, you can do stuff like this. So that's eliminating all that other stuff. So it's, el gotcha. it's eliminating basically the unhealthy component of right. the, the workaround for vegan. That's awesome. But I do that six. Usually I aim for six out of seven days a week. But that seventh day, you're kind of looking at it. To do what? Right? <laughs> If you missed out, you're gonna have to watch. You try to do vegan? No, you're gonna have to watch the documentary if you weren't paying attention. Not gonna be around. If you took just one day off, you'd completely fall off of it. You'd never go back. No, but like it's just how I am. Like I, it's too risky for me. You know. So there's a risk. Then. There's a risk. You're worried that you might not come back. Yeah. I don't know. And I've gotten so used to it. And I think it's better for the environment and it's better for the animals. Like it's not like my big concern. Am I like really obsessed with that? No, you know. But like. If it's better, I always I always try to convince people to do vegan one day of one day a week. Start with one day. Yeah, because that would that makes a big difference. If everybody on the planet did one day a week, that'd make a huge difference. So, yeah. 
as I've been down the breakfast burrito. <laughs> this is the size of one of my dogs before. Before you ate it? Mm -hmm. Well, speaking as someone who does flip flop and goes back and forth. Not bad. But the, by the time I'm done with my day off, I'm looking forward to going back to the plant-based diet. Because it all, it, it's all based on what gut flora you're feeding. So that's why you'll get uncontrollable urges or cravings for uh, this that he's eating. If you eat that, you're feeding the gut flora uh, that, that lives off of it, right? Those, uh, those microorganisms that are in there that are bad for you. The more you eat plant-based food, the more you're feeding the good gut bacteria. And so you'll start getting cravings for that. So it's all about the ratio of good to bad uh, gut flora. So that's why I'm always looking forward to going back to it. What's your go-to food? Actually, kale. All right. My go-to food is kale. And oh, then, no. Wait, you're not doing chicken and all that stuff? <laughs> Watch that happen. Yeah. I'll never tell. You're not, you're not doing eat chicken and all that stuff? I don't eat chicken. You don't eat chicken. What do you do for protein? Maybe I'm not getting enough plant-based brain food. I can't focus. Could be. I can definitely eat tacos after this if I stick to this. Are you tacos like right after this? You know, there's travel time, I'm sure. <laughs> Pancakes and tacos. I can, you know, purge in the car out the window <laughs> as I'm driving. <laughs>
Who wants to juggle? I don't think I can finish this latte. It's, it's making the pancake expand more than the first latte would. Well, that's it. I'm already full of latte. I'll watch you like Bat Dad. <laughs> hey, juggle yes. boy. Devastating. Do a 360. <laughs> And so after fulfilling the obligatory juggling in an industrial alley scene, we all parted ways and saved some calories. And since I blew my weekly budget on two pancakes, I rolled everything over into an ambitious scavenger hunt for my final day in Los Angeles. Next time on Fast Food. With a slight course correction, it's a fasting race to the finish line as I try to fit in a workout and then collect my favorite foods from five LA eateries before catching my flight home. Will three days worth of food all fit into my carry-on bags and stay fresh enough for my 11 p.m. breakfast at home? Find out next time on Fast Food.